back it's still me with you here and uh, this is the last conversation at least for me and then the next one brad sako will be coming up with mcm now we are on youth and career and we want to talk a little bit about personal branding and uh, refining your etiquette or refining your personal brand and uh, etiquette uh, guidelines and rules that are there and for this we are joined by an expert we have coach Alice Muhira who's an image and etiquette consultant to guide us through the conversation Kari Busana Asante glad to have you with us I'm so honored. Okay, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I know I've introduced you, but what does uh, Coach Alice exactly do? Break it down a little bit. Thank you. My name is Coach Alice Mohira. Mm -hmm. I'm an image and etiquette consultant. I help executives and business owners to refine their image, expression, presence, presentation skills, mm -hmm. so that they become <coughs> more convincing, more conversant, and more converting in their career. Okay, yeah. interesting. So this applies to everyone. Yes. For a youth that's just looking into getting a career, they can also refine their image, right? Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. tell us uh, how for, for a youth that's just looking into getting a career, how should their image look like? How should they build their personal brand? That's a very interesting question. As we know, um, the human mind is judgmental mm -hmm. and we all judge based on appearance. Before I came to this interview, just by looking at you, mm -hmm. I can make an assumption on your professionalism and expertise. Just looking at how you carry yourself, how you're dressed, how you speak, your posture, mm -hmm. your guide, and all that contributes into judging you in one way or another. Okay. So I help executives win that first step mm -hmm. of making a correct lasting impression. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so yeah. uh, there's a way, and I, I have to acknowledge that how you're seated tells a lot of you being, <laughs> you know, it qualifies you being an a, a image consultant and, yes. you know, clearly you, uh, you do, you, how do you call it? You practice what you preach. Yes. All right. Uh, still on Matters Youth. So how should they give us the one, two, threes mm. of uh, creating a good image, yes. presenting a good image when you go out there for an interview? Let's say we can start with an interview. How do you create a good image before you even start being questioned? Yes. Um, my, my main goal is to equip you with what I call my five Ps. Mm -hmm. My five Ps start with your poise head to toe, how you look, how you dress. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it has to be the right thing. Mm -hmm. The right colors, the right cuts, mm -hmm. the right texture, the right type of hair, the, the right type of makeup, the right type of nails, all that. Okay. And then the second P will be your presence. Presence. Yes. Mm -hmm. How you fill up the room. How do you overtake the room? when you're there without doing too much. Okay. The third element will be your presentation. Presentation, uh huh. How you introduce yourself in different settings, in social settings, in professional settings. Mm -hmm. How do you build that good rapport that is going to be convincing to your interviewer or to your even romantic prospect? Okay. Not necessarily career-wise, uh -huh. but how do you make that good impression, that build rapport? Mm -hmm. The fourth P is your posture. Mm -hmm. For people who don't know, posture talks a lot about your personality. How you sit, if you sit in a manner that you man spread your legs, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you take over the space, you are using so much hand gestures, you are front on the face. Our non-verbals speaks a lot about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I help you govern your non-verbals uh -huh. so that you build confidence that takes over and this applies to introvert to extroverted people mm -hmm. to help you take over your body and really lead okay. from within okay i help you build confidence from the core you don't have to depend on a good hair day 
You don't <laughs> have to depend on free people there. Mm -hmm. How do we become okay. confident with all those adversities that we are going through? Mm -hmm. With that limitation mm -hmm. on speech, with not being so much eloquent, how can I be confident without a British accent? How can I be confident as a plus size girl? How can I be confident with any other thing that should limit you? Mm -hmm. The fourth P will be, will be your presence. Mm -hmm. as a, no, not your, your right. presentation skills. And then from your presentation skills will be the power of partaking. Power of partaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do I articulate? Mm -hmm. How do I convince? How do I learn, take the person to the next level? Mm -hmm. How do I convince the person? Here has the the emotional intelligence part, the convincing skills mm -hmm. to help you navigate the social ladder or the professional ladder. And the last P mm -hmm. will be the power of parole. Power of parole? Yeah, parole. Mm -hmm. How you speak. Do you have a tonality when you speak? Is there authority when you speak? Can people feel your gravitas when you speak? Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a higher tone. You don't have to have complicated words. You don't have to have the whole dictionary in your head. But mm -hmm. there is power when you speak that, that, that comes with wisdom, that comes with knowledge and expertise. Okay. Yes, those are my five mm -hmm. rules that I write and, and, and coach young career people to break the, the career ceiling. Okay, yeah. wow, this is amazing. And I want us to uh, talk around this a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. so uh, that you can give them uh, tidbits. I know you can't have everything here yes. today, yes. but tidbits of all that, some detail into it. For the poor, how should one, how should one be? What is the right uh, way to pause? For the presence, tell us a little bit about this. Let's start with the pause. Um, pause, it's basically your appearance. Mm -hmm head to toe and as I said it doesn't have to be expensive most of the people who come for mm -hmm. my consultancy they say oh image consulting is very <laughs> expensive I don't have money to do that I don't have to do ABCD yeah. it doesn't have to be expensive mm -hmm. I coach you on how to dress your body type in okay. a manner that is going to give you a flattering image F you can even choose to shop thrifted clothes but you know, at least you know your you, body type. You know your body type. You know the colors that suit your skin tone. And then how to match them in a manner that is going to give you visibility. Okay. Yes. I didn't know colors suit well, your skin tones. There are colors that suit skin tones better than others. Let's say for me, what colors would suit my skin tone? Like that red, that bold red that you're wearing. Uh -huh. If you are to put, for example, a black... Uh, vest on top of that blue dress mm -hmm. it it will not give you the same reflection it okay. will not allow your skin to pop mm -hmm. this red gives you authority okay it gives you power it, it gives you conviction but when you wear a black on top of the blue it is going to dim your skin mm -hmm. and it is going to affect the perception of authority that you have okay. you are going to be less approachable when you wear black on black Mm -hmm. But when you've put a red against a blue or a um, purple against red, things like that, okay. compared to your skin tone, there is a way it affects your visibility, it, affects, it allows your skin to pop, and it gives an impression of someone who is approachable, who is bold, who is intelligent, who is loyal, things like that. Okay, yeah. wow, a lot to j just dressing alone. Yes, just dressing alone can <laughs> really talk a lot. The hair texture, mm -hmm. I like that because hair texture also reflects authority. Mm -hmm. It's not by accident that we see those big personal brands worldwide. Let's talk about women. Like when we say Michelle Obama, for example, mm -hmm. there is already an image of a hair bulb that comes. Yeah. Even though recently she has started changing her hairstyle, okay. she's enjoying her freedom so much. But when she was in the office, Mm -hmm. She maintained a certain hairstyle. Okay. Why? Because there is a perception she wants to give to people that I am contented. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong by repeating one style. 
So you can just have one style. Yes. That's your style. That's your style. When we talk about opera, when we talk about Margaret Kenyatta, for example, mm -hmm. let me talk local, local brand. Yeah. There is a perception of a short hair, well, well chopped, well kept, mm -hmm. well kept but still has authority. Mm. That lady can afford any type of hair every single day. Sure. But for her personal brand, mm -hmm. for leading perception about who she is as a person who is contented, mm -hmm. strong character, <coughs> Mm -hmm. She has one hair all through. Okay. So there's nothing wrong, ladies, by keeping right. one type of hair. <laughs> That's inspiring, encouraging. Yes. yes. <laughs> when we okay. speak about Caroline Mutoko, for example, mm. she's one of the high TV personality. Yeah. There's a type of hair that comes in the head when you speak about Caroline. Mm. Okay. You see? Yeah. So these, it's part of the trait that build character that shows a strong personality. Mm -hmm. So ladies who are looking forward into building a career, find a signature look that when they talk about Alice, when they talk about you, mm -hmm. it is already a perception of your image. Okay. Yes. They can quickly see you. Yes. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now on to presence. Mm -hmm. How do you establish your presence? Presence goes again with the characteristic of your personal brand. How do you want to be perceived? Do you want to be perceived as someone who is bubbly, as someone who is soft, as someone who is approachable, as someone who is grounded and imperative? And mm -hmm. so depending on the character that you want, I help you embody that character okay. by having the quality that codifies that. Are you a person who controls the room, who makes their presence fe being felt when you enter a room? Because there are people in this world, even if they enter the room, even the rat don't respect them. They just no cross. One yes. But there is a person <laughs> who will enter the room mm -hmm. and everything in that room they will recognize that she has come, she has entered. I like giving women that Cleopatra feeling that I take over without doing much. Okay. Yeah. And what does, wh what do you need to do for someone mm -hmm. um, who's an introvert, but their yes. brand needs them to, needs their presence to be felt when they enter a room? Yes. How do you get them to get there? Because for an introvert, you don't really want that attention. Yes. But you might need the attention because of what your brand entails. I think there, there had been a wrong connotation between being an introvert and being a timid person. Okay. <laughs> I am an introvert person, uh -huh. but I dissociated my timidity from being an introvert. So fighting that timidity and say, I want to take over the room without doing much, without shouting. I don't have to do things that make me feel uncomfortable because being an introvert, you are so guarded. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be out there. You don't want to do much. You don't want to do a lot of talking. Yeah. <laughs> we are what we call peopleing. You Just don't want your yeah. space. Yes, you want your space. So how do I comfortably have my space and yet be discoverable by making your brand recognizable in in the in the mass? Mm -hmm. So it needs a special type of visibility that is not bold. So how do I yeah. do that? I present myself in a manner that I will be different from the rest without talking, but the way I'm seated, mm -hmm. the way I talk, the way I'm dressed, the way I carry myself, the way I talk to people, your body language, let us offer mm -hmm. a different experience yeah. with the little circle that you can handle. Mm -hmm. And that will do the talking for the rest. Okay, yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now onto your presentation. How do you build that? This is another interesting part because when you know how to navigate social and professional circles in a manner that build rapport, mm -hmm. you are easily going to become interesting and people will remember you. Oh, that lady who did, so, who did that and that. You will find someone is introducing themselves and say, mm, my name is so-and-so and I do one, two, three. And you went, what is one, two, three? Um, I do so many things at a time. <laughs> yeah. I help um, young career people to find 
presentation tags that are easily to remember. The reason why so many people struggle with presentation is because they don't have it already prepared. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go to a closet full of clothes that are not well arranged and yeah. you are told pick a, a, an outfit to wear going for dinner, for example. <laughs> it's, it's a mess. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you always feel like I have nothing to wear. Mm -hmm. So it is difficult to do a presentation that is complete and effective if you don't have it already prepared in your mind. Mm -hmm. So you need to have different taglines that you're going to use in different settings. And you just pick this. When I'm in a social setting, I just pick that. When okay. I'm in a professional setting, I pick this. So I help you construct your taglines mm -hmm. for different for different settings. So if you're in a professional networking event, mm. then you know this is the tagline yes. I need to use. Yes. So in a set social setting, mm. going for dates, then you know yes. this is now the one that I'm picking. Yes. Then it makes it easier for you to, to know to how to present yourself. Exactly. Okay. Mm. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. And now uh, to posture. Now you've said posture should, um, and you've also trained them on confidence. Yes. So give us details into this. Confidence is number one element that builds conviction. Mm -hmm. When you have confidence, it's easy to sell anything. Mm -hmm. It's easy to pass. Um, it's easy to pass your expertise. There is a challenge that young people really face on the on the work market space, where everyone is looking for experienced people. True. I think there is also um, a confusion. People confuse expertise and experience. Mm -hmm. They always think that uh, the most experienced person is is the, the most is the expert, but that's not true mm -hmm. because the expertise is the know-how. You can still have the skills with limited time of having practiced that. And there are also people who have been in the industry for ten to fifteen years, but they have just been there, not doing so much. Mm -hmm. The only way young people will make it to the ceiling top is to have those convincing skills. Because nowadays, worldwide, people buy people. Mm -hmm. People follow those who knows who, okay. or who have done what. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that is going to take you there is your level of confidence and people skills. Having the ability to convince, having the ability to hold good conversation with people, being a good listener. People drop gainers, moving from one gainer to the other, not necessarily because they lack expertise, but because they, they have never had that particular extra with them. Mm -hmm. They choose to go to another gainer because he has more listening skills. Okay. He's present. He's taking time to listen to you, to listen to what you want. So this is the that time to the learn, mm -hmm. yes, how to convince people. How do, do I serve more extra to other people? Mm -hmm. How do I become more convincing yeah. and more relevant to what people need? Mm -hmm. People can find expertise everywhere, but what keeps people, what returns people to you, it's not necessarily your expertise. It's the extra service that you give that them, you the extra care that you carry around that is the etiquette mm -hmm. that is the part of feeling making them feel comfortable making them being heard being, being understood S something simple as remembering people's name always calling them hey hi today you had a rendezvous with dr so and so are you available mm -hmm. do you remember that tomorrow you have your rendezvous or dropping them a simple email throughout the week how are you taking your medicine? Is there any side wow. effect? Mm -hmm. Things like that. The aftercare is what return clients. Okay. And the return the client. It's easy to return a client that to have a new one. New on one coming on yes. board. Yes. Yes. All right. And mm. the clients that you have will also recommend others to exactly. you. Exactly. So it's key. Either mm. I don't really. Uh, you will tell me your opinion about it, but there is no any other. Mm -hmm. Um, marketing convincing tool as a mother of mouth. True. <laughs> True. When I refer you to my doctor, 
you, you don't have to do a background check. You have no doubt about <laughs> it. Yes. Yeah. You say, oh, I was referred by my mom. I was referred by my friend. I was referred by... Mm -hmm. And it, it, it takes away the convincing part from the doctor mm. because you have already done the marketing. Sure. So when you have your clients already on board, find ways to retain those because those are your ambassadors. Mm. And only convincing skills, people skills, are the one, I call them transferring skills because they are going to transfer you more clients. They are going to take you further along mm -hmm. in your career. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. I want to talk about confidence. You had mentioned this when we started uh, on... Um, uh, on this. So confidence. Some people have everything. They have the expertise, but confidence is a problem. So how would you advise? Where is confidence built from? You know, if someone mm -hmm. comes to you and that's something that they're lacking, how do you help them build it? Uh, I would like to give you maybe a background check on that. Mm -hmm. Professionally, I'm an econometrist. Okay. So I did mathematics and, and physics. And from there, I went to did my master's degree in statistics i was a researcher and i was this person who struggled a lot with confidence oh, okay who struggled a lot with <laughs> speaking in front of people wow look at you who would scramble and cry oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. my primary levels mm -hmm. i was so bad when it comes to people confrontation uh, okay i went to do mathematics basically because I wanted to avoid anything that makes me stand in front of people. Mm -hmm. And it went on like that. And I sank and sank in being an introvert. Okay. When I finished doing my studies, I went to do the research because that's what, <laughs> what I studied for. Mm -hmm. I would do a very good research very good writing but don't put me to do a presentation uh -huh, that's where you draw the line <laughs> <laughs> i remember one time when i finished a presentation one person who was supposed to find us to where i, I used to work mm -hmm. was it, are you sure are you the same person who wrote, who wrote this, this? <laughs> and i'm like yeah i am <laughs> <laughs> because there was a disconnect there was a complete disconnect and uh -huh. i said okay and that's when I realized I really have to work on this. Mm -hmm. Working on your confidence is, it starts first by your mindset, okay. how you define yourself, mm -hmm. your limiting beliefs. Why do I think I can't talk? Mm -hmm. Why do I think I lack the ability to convince? Why do I fear, fear people? What made me fear crowd? Go back and do the background check. What made you fear crowd? Mm -hmm. It, it is maybe something that starts from your childhood. childhood. Maybe your parents didn't approve you that much. Or maybe you have experienced so much bullying as a child. Mm. Maybe growing up, there are so many things that happened to you that hindered your confidence in terms of image. Mm -hmm. And start building that. Build that body confidence that is going to help you stand the odds. Okay. And when you build that, when you speak to those limiting beliefs and start the element of journaling helps a lot in building confidence because you are reaffirming yourself okay when you reaffirm yourself further and further and exercise mm. speak speak to the mirror talk to yourself every morning when when you wake up try to do a, a public address okay. <laughs> in your bathroom things like that it works it works so much mm -hmm. and i also help by teaching different uh, techniques that mm. are, help, are going to help you uh, fight the fright. When, when, when you want to speak and you, you feel a blockage somewhere, what are the techniques that we use okay. to help you camouflage fear? Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you mind mentioning a technique? At least one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when, when, when you're someone who fears speaking uh, in the crowd or in a, during an interview, for example, mm -hmm. You have to create what we call exit points. Okay. Exit points that the, how you make your body contact your body to release mm. that fear, that, that movement. So you can use either a thumb or you can use a point of contact on your legs. Okay. For example, the way you're doing or uh -huh. the way I'm doing, try uh -huh. to press your 
oh, behind one leg. leg like that, uh -huh. press it so hard, okay. and place the leg down on the floor. Mm -hmm. Pick your left hand, mm -hmm. use this thumb, and pull it, press it, and hide it with this. Pause it. Wow. And how do you feel? <laughs> Okay. More relieved. More relaxed. Yeah, more, more relaxed. relaxed. <laughs> and when you speak, mm -hmm. it, number one, it is going to help you not use a lot of hand gestures. Most mm. of the time, we tend to use m hand gestures when a you're lot nervous. when you're nervous. Okay. So when you do this, it is going to give you a point of release from your upper body. And uh, this is going to give you the point of release for your lower body. Uh -huh. So when you speak, you are so grounded. My. And the speech comes so easily. So there is nothing that is blocking here because you have a point of release on the lower body, on the uh, upper body. Uh -huh. So these are some of the techniques that I train executives on how to maintain poise and how to speak with ease mm -hmm. so that you portray confidence, even if you feel so much nervous. Mm -hmm. And it won't show. It, it, it won't show because it, all, everything is all about creating good impression. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a, I, I've gotten a hack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You when know? you are nervous, Wait, when um, you want to submit your resignation. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know how to do this. I'll you just, do that. You know, yes, yes. <laughs> press this. And then you hide. Yeah. You and press, press it. Like, mm -hmm. you, you speak. And then when you speak, you have point of release on upper body and down body. So you will not frown, you will not freeze, you will not feel a burning just, edge, yeah. Yeah, congested. So you are at, at, uh, you're at peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, interesting, mm -hmm. amazing. And I'm sure there's so, many, uh, so much more to it. Yes, there are so much more. Uh, there are many mm -hmm. uh, body language techniques that helps you portray confidence and build convincing skills mm -hmm. that is going to help you become more convincing. Yeah. Wow, I think we need a whole a whole session just to <laughs> to, to talk about confidence and how yes. we can help the yeah. techniques that are mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we're going to get her again yeah. to talk to us about it. Uh, power of partaking. Yeah. Uh, and he mentioned uh, emotional intelligence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. This this uh, this is also another convincing um, layer when it comes to uh, executive gravitas. How do I portray that I am present regardless of what is going on in my mind, mm -hmm. regardless of my personal cares? How do I surmount that and showcase love, kindness, empathy, warmth mm. in my team or in my junior or seniors at work? How do I, because we are supposed to come with love, empathy, mm. even if I'm going through divorce yeah. <laughs> or even if uh, my boyfriend has texted me, it is over. We're done. Just <laughs> one minute before you come <laughs> to, to do your presentation. Yes. Uh -huh. We are done like of things like that because <laughs> we have life and life comes with a lot of source. So yeah. <laughs> you have to know how to navigate all that and wear different hearts in mm. different rooms. Okay. You are a mother, your baby is sick. Mm -hmm. How do I still come at work and still have that leadership capacity that I'm supposed to have? And yet I'm going through a lot at mm -hmm. home. It's yeah. very important to have that amount of emotional intelligence to help you navigate the okay. space so that you don't become that mm -hmm. needy worker yeah. who is always whining or crying. Mm -hmm. And again, you, so that you don't become too imperative mm -hmm. to help you fetch the balance as you go along. Okay. Yeah. And how do you get um, to have good emotional intelligence? How do you build on it? You start by having that awareness of my strength, my weaknesses, mm -hmm. my triggers, <laughs> mm -hmm. what triggers me the most, and okay. now learn how to self-regulate. How do I regulate my emotions? How do I sometimes also embrace vulnerability? I also encourage executives that do not die inwardly trying to give a good impression to your employer. It mm. won't help. How do I uh, allow myself to be vulnerable times to times in my workspace okay. so that I don't forget to be a human? Okay. <laughs> yes. So how, how, okay, how vulnerable can you be at your place of work? 
Um, depending on, on how your workspace is, mm -hmm. it's important to have your fundamental rights. That is um, the freedom of expression. That is, um, if you feel tired, for example, and, and you are given an impossible deadline, say, um, I've been unwell this time, and I think this deadline for me is not working. Okay. Based on the tasks, that, the things I need to deliver, I need maybe one more day, I need two days, mm -hmm. things like that. You can be vulnerable expressing about what you feel, what you're going through in life, and, and um, what is going on in your, in your work schedule. Mm. Claiming your boundaries as well, it's, it's important. So many um, juniors are taken advantage in the workspace mm -hmm. because they can't uh, they don't have work boundaries. Uh, yeah, they can't so say no. They can't say no on long hours. They can't say no on workloads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, are, <laughs> they are always overloaded. Ask you, you are young. You just you, take this You out. stay well. <laughs> you, what are you doing on the weekend? So you just come. We don't have a family. In. You don't you have just, a family. Yeah, <laughs> you just come and do exactly. it. Exactly. And even if I don't have a time uh, to spend with uh, family. Family doesn't mean necessarily husband and wife. Mm -hmm. It can be me and my pet. Exactly. It can be me and my closet. Yeah, you and your friends. It's you have a life. Friend. It can be me and me alone. Yeah. So it's important to have that emotional intelligence to claim your space, to claim your time, mm -hmm. to stand on your standard and values and boundaries. Okay, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Finally, on the P's that you give us, power of parole, yes. and here you, you, you uh, mentioned that it's the authority that you give when you speak. Yes. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit more about that again. This is also another interesting point because um, mm -hmm. the level of intelligence, the level of uh, expertise that a, a person has to portray also comes with your expression. It is when you speak that I'm able to notice how knowledgeable you are. Mm -hmm. It's important to have deep knowledge in every area of your work. Okay. If I'm into TV, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to be knowledgeable. I have to know what is going on in the country, in the world. And it's important to yeah. be broad. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right context. You have to have the right words. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to know how to speak in a manner that you take the person with you as you speak. So I train you techniques on how you speak in a relatable manner. Okay. Yeah, don't speak for, for the sake of speaking <laughs> or don't speak about the country you traveled. Okay. How uh, there are people who you will interview, they are from Italy, they would be telling you, oh, in Italy, things are like that, <laughs> things are like that. So okay. speak the context of something that is relatable. Mm -hmm. Take people with you as you speak. How so? Pardon? How do you take people with you as you speak? Try to pull them in your emotion. Try to pull them as you go. It's like when you are reading a book, mm -hmm. you imagine the scene as you read. Okay. The speech should do the same in a, in a visual mode mm -hmm. that I'm taking you through my speech to experience what I'm speaking. And that gives the conviction part because I'm allowing you to go and imagine a scene okay. in your speech. So mm -hmm. by the time we are done, you're already convinced to purchase whatever I'm selling. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. I mean, there are hacks to everything. Yes, there are. <laughs> Clearly. That's why you see some leaders uh -huh. are very easy to convince when it comes to voting. Mm. Because they have learned those parole techniques mm -hmm. that they take you through. You don't even have to wait for the day. You have already voted them. Yeah, you've already decided yeah. from the first yes. speech and the yes. the from their first campaign. From You're already there. You have already said, mm, this one I will give. Yeah, okay. Mm. Because they have, they have a mastery of yes. this. And there are others mm -hmm. who have a very nice political manifesto, who have a very good rom roadmap, but their body language... It's off. It's off. It's not convinced. You see, you were lying all through. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you won't do what you exactly, say. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. This is amazing. Before we finish, I'd want us to touch on etiquette, because yes. this is also what you do. Mm. Tell us a bit about etiquette. 
Mm -hmm. uh, how are you supposed to carry out yourself when you're in a business, okay, some business etiquette, some mm. dining etiquette, yeah. when you're meeting professionals, mm. how do you carry yourself? Mm -hmm. Etiquette is another element mm -hmm. that really helps us navigate social and professional circles. It's another element that, that convinces the person that mm -hmm. they are safe around you, that they are safe giving you their money, that they are safe mm -hmm. employing you because they're seeing how you carry yourself. And that is the importance of good manners. Okay. Um, your expertise may give you the job, but what will retain you, you there, mm -hmm. what will keep you there, is how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. It's very important. I would say b some basic, 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 basic business etiquette is the ability to be polite uh, when you speak to people, especially those who are lower than you, the way you carry yourself, the patience that you show, mm -hmm. and uh, the respect that you carry uh, in the office, not necessarily when your senior is there. Okay. <laughs> because everyone is supposed to be respectful when seniors are there. Mm -hmm. But how do you carry yourself to the lower staff, mm -hmm. to the people who are very subordinate? I would say um, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, not talking back is a very good sign. Not of, talking back. Yes, mm. of, of, of good etiquette. Mm -hmm. Not um, interrupting people when they are speaking. Mm. And there are people who whom you are speaking to, they say, ah, not to interrupt you. Not to, <laughs> and you're already heard. doing <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, not standing in, the, in front of in front of uh, a lift when people are still coming out. You're already oh. wanting to <laughs> go in. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's poor etiquette. Mm. Gossip in, in, our, in our professional setting, it's poor etiquette mm. still. Uh, not being punctual is poor etiquette. Mm -hmm. I would say all those lack of ethics can really display poor etiquette and compromise on your ability to convince how good you are as a leader or how good you are as a teammate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. I think these are basic things that we, sh we ought to know, but sometimes we ignore. We ignore. Yet there, uh -huh. you know, there are good etiquettes to mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. What about dining etiquette? Sometimes you go to a prof networking event mm -hmm. and uh, people are dining, so how do you carry yourself uh, in such a setup? Oh, yeah, so unless we do a whole show on that. <laughs> <laughs> Number one session. thing I see is um, overindulging. Oh, okay. When you go in a professional <laughs> gala night and you drink and drink and dance in a loose manner, uh -huh. <laughs> over serving yourself, mm. then you go and you have a whole have mountain. A whole <laughs> <laughs> like mm. you know, you're not going to get this at home, so yes, you serve it on. When you mm. go for professional uh, dining or executive dining, it's not time for eating. <laughs> yeah. It's time to create good rapport mm. so that you convince the other person that you're the right person to, to close the deal with. Okay. So you don't serve to fulfill yourself. It's something that you're going to pass time on as you speak, as you converse. Mm. It's time to build good rapport with the other person. It's not time to indulge. It's not time to really taste a, a fast dish that you have ever wanted to try because <laughs> <laughs> it can give you a very bad experience. Okay. Yeah. So you you try out things that you... Uh, on your own, on solo dates. <laughs> <laughs> don't <laughs> try to enough. eat, for, for example, don't try to eat sushi. When if you've you have, never tried it If you have never tried it before, <laughs> if you don't know how to use the chopsticks, uh, if you yeah. don't know how to dip in the soya sauce and mm. eat in a right manner, uh -huh. If you know this, that is your first time. Okay. Yeah. And I know there's uh, a whole, you know, there's a lot to it in, in terms of dining, how you're supposed to, you know, uh, eat using yes. the forks and knives and yes. everything. And yes. maybe we're going to have a session mm. for that some other time. Yes. Uh, but now I want to give you a chance to uh, say something to mm. the youth. Um, you mostly deal with executives, yes. uh, I understand. But what advice would you give to the youth in ta uh, on matters, uh, image refinement, mm. and uh, etiquette? This yes. is your camera, you can speak directly. Yeah, I will, I will tell you, mm -hmm. 
that don't sleep on your talent. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep on your talent. Refine your image and get the presence and presentation skills that you need to be able to replace these old people who don't want to leave the seat. <laughs> uh -huh. Because the only thing that is making them stay there is because they have convinced the crowd that they have the experience. And the only way you can be able to break in is to have those convincing skills, to have those people skills that are, that are going to help you showcase your expertise. Refining your image doesn't cost you as much as lack of it will cost you. People will judge your appearance, mm. people will judge your presence skills, people will try to uh, court you in a way that you look unprofessional simply because you look unrefined. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing to do with your expertise. But before you showcase what you can do, be before you showcase your know-how, you have to look the part. Mm -hmm. And the only way you look the part is to have a refined image, a convincing presence, and having that ability to, re to be a relatable person okay. in your career. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you very much for You're the welcome. amazing, amazing insights on this. We hope uh, to Thank have you. you back again with us. Obviously. All right. Thank that you. has been uh, Coach Alice Muhira, who is an image and etiquette consultant, talking to us about image refinement and etiquette, if you like, personal branding. I hope you have taken something from it. Uh, if you join in late, don't worry. You're going to get it on YouTube as soon as it's, up, as it's uploaded. Yeah uploaded on y254 channel remember to also converse with us the hashtag is wine the morning my personal handle is at stephanie ayeta we're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back with mcm brian sakwa we'll be there for that